are you, boys? I hear you're going to get the inside story on the automatic overdrive tonight. <laughs> that they are, Tech. But before we get into the operation of this overdrive unit, let me tell you what it does. Actually, it gives you the advantage of automatic fourth gear performance at speeds above 25 miles per hour. This is the control handle. When it's pushed in, the unit is in the overdrive position, ready to operate when the correct car speed is reached. And that speed's between 24 and 27 miles per hour. Second, when the handle is pulled out, your car will operate in conventional drive. In other words, you have cut the overdrive unit out. Can you push that handle in any time you want to, Russ? Yes, you can, Joe. You can do it either with the car stationary or moving at any speed. <laughs> and I guess my next question better be, can you pull the handle out at any speed? Sure, but don't just yank the handle out. Here's how you make the shift. Suppose you want to shift to conventional drive. The best time to do it is at speeds below 20 miles per hour after the unit has shifted back to direct drive. Then you depress the accelerator slightly and pull out the control handle. That's all there is to it. But suppose you're traveling at speeds above 25 miles an hour in overdrive and you want to return to conventional drive. To do this, you fully depress the accelerator pedal and kick down into conventional third gear. Then pull out the control handle. And don't push in that clutch pedal. Before you explain how this overdrive works, uh, Russ, how about telling Chris and me just what overdrive is anyway? Glad to, Joe. First, let's look at conventional drive. Suppose your engine turns over 1,000 RPM. In conventional drive, this means you would have 1,000 RPM at the propeller shaft, too. But with overdrive, the engine would require only 700 RPM to have 1,000 RPM at the propeller shaft. Since this overdrive is basically a planetary gear set, maybe you ought to explain how planetary gears work. A very good idea, Tech. First off, let's remember what we learned in school about the sun and the earth. Remember how the pictures in our school book showed the sun with the earth rotating around it? Well, in this overdrive unit, we have a sun gear, which is free running on the transmission main shaft. And we have three earths called pinions, which mesh with the sun gear. Right, Tech. And these pinions are held in a fixture which we call a pinion cage. This cage is splined to the transmission main shaft. That means, then, that the cage turns all the time the transmission main shaft turns, right? That's correct, Chris. That's how you put power into this set of gears. But let's keep talking for a minute about this gear set. There's an internal tooth ring gear around these pinions, meshing with them. This ring gear is actually a part of a unit which has a shaft called the overdrive main shaft. And this shaft is actually the output shaft for the overdrive unit. See if I follow you, Russ. You mean that the transmission main shaft is the input shaft and this overdrive main shaft is the output shaft. Right on the head, Chris. You can see that these two have to be connected so that power can be carried from one to the other. How do you do that, Russ? Well, let's take a look at this overrunning clutch. It's located right behind the pinion cage and is splined to the transmission main shaft, the same as the cage is. You mean that the transmission main shaft drives the overdrive main shaft through the overrunning clutch? Hold it right there, Chris. That happens only under certain conditions. Let Russ finish what he's going to tell you. <laughs> okay, Tech, I can take a hint. <laughs> First, let's see how we get power through this planetary gear set. We want two types of drive overdrive and direct drive. Now, in order to get overdrive, we must hold the sun gear so it can't rotate. Remember now, we're putting power into the gear set through the pinion cage because it's splined to the transmission main shaft. So the cage will be turning at engine speed. Now, by keeping this sun gear from turning, the cage will carry the pinions around the sun gear. And this means that each pinion will have to rotate on its own axis as it rolls around this sun gear. Right, Tech. And now, just for a moment, let's think of the pinion as a lever. 
If you hold one end of a lever against a solid object and push at the center of the lever, the outer end will travel a greater distance than the center. Actually, that's just what you're doing with the pinions in this type of gear setup. One side of the pinion is held against the sun gear, which is stationary. Power is applied against the center of the pinion through its axle, which is attached to the pinion cage. And remember, that cage is turning because it is spined to the transmission main shaft. Right, Tech. That means that the outer side of the pinion, which is enmeshed with the ring gear, will push the ring gear a greater distance and faster than the pinion cage is turning. And that's the overdrive action we're talking about. When that ring gear and overdrive main shaft goes faster than the pinion cage which drives it, you have overdrive. What's the power flow during overdrive, Russ? It comes in through the transmission main shaft, goes into the pinion cage, to the pinions, to the ring gear, and out through the overdrive main shaft. Hmm, I get it now, but... but Direct drive. How do I get that through this gear set? Looks complicated to me. Not at all, Chris. Actually, it's done in two different ways, depending on whether the unit is operating in the overdrive position or in the conventional drive position. I'm listening and waiting for that light to come on in my head. <laughs> Just keep listening. It'll come on, Chris. Suppose we take conventional drive position first. That's just the same as having no overdrive at all. This means we'll have to make the whole planetary gear set work as a single unit. In other words, all of the parts will have to be locked together. Locked together, eh? How do you do that, Russ? All we have to do, Joe, is move the sun gear so that its teeth will mesh with the internal teeth in the pinion cage. And we do this by pulling out that dash control handle. Then the sun gear will turn with the pinion cage, and so will the ring gear because the pinions are in mesh with the sun gear and also with the ring gear. So in this position, the transmission main shaft will drive the pinion cage. And since the sun gear, the pinion cage, and the ring gear are all locked together, the entire gear set revolves as a single unit. Now, let's see what happens when the unit is in the overdrive position, that is, with the control handle pushed in but with the car speed too slow for the overdrive to cut in. Under these conditions, the sun gear is not held still, but it's free to turn on the transmission main shaft. That means that when the pinion cage is rotated, the pinions have nothing to push against. Which means that they can't drive the ring gear. Right, Tech. And that's where the overrunning clutch comes into the picture. And remember, that overrunning clutch is splined to the transmission main shaft. Hey, somebody better turn this record quick like or we're going to lose our voices. Hey, Tech, we're working like a team now, eh? So when the transmission main shaft turns, it also turns the inner part or cam of the overrunning clutch. This action forces the rollers to move up the ramps of the cam. By moving up, they become wedged between the cam and the outer race of the clutch which is part of the ring gear and overdrive main shaft assembly. So the power flow is from the transmission main shaft through the overrunning clutch to the overdrive main shaft assembly and out. Therefore, when the rear wheels try to drive the engine, these rollers move down off their ramps so there's no power connection between the overdrive main shaft and the transmission main shaft. That's right, Chris. Now that we understand how the planetary gear set works and how you can get power through it so that we have the same or greater speed from the output shaft, let's see how this particular overdrive unit operates to get these different conditions. Say, what about the electrical units, Russ? Isn't this overdrive unit operated electrically? That it is, Chris, but right now I'd like to stick to its mechanical operation. We'll talk about the electrical system later. Why don't you start out by telling the boys what happens inside the overdrive unit when you move the control handle in or out? A good idea, Tech. As we go along, we'll get acquainted with some of the other parts which we haven't mentioned so far. A fine way, me boy. Let's start with the overdrive dash control pulled out. That means that the unit is in 
conventional drive position. And remember, in conventional drive, all parts of the planetary gear set are locked together. Here's what happens when we push that overdrive dash control in. You shift the sun gear out of mesh with the pinion cage so the sun gear control plate can take over. This plate is located in the adapter between the overdrive housing and the transmission case and is splined to the sun gear. It has a mighty important job to do, as you'll see in a moment. Now, when the car speed reaches the overdrive cut-in speed, somewhere between 24 and 27 miles per hour, and you take your foot off the accelerator pedal, a pawl is moved into one of the notches of this sun gear control plate by the action of a solenoid. This pawl holds the plate from turning. It also keeps the sun gear from turning because the gear is meshed with the plate. That's mighty important, because that sun gear must be kept from rotating in order for the gear set to work as an overdrive. Right. From that moment on, the unit is in overdrive. The pinions are driving the ring gear. Now, when the car speed drops below the overdrive cutout speed, the solenoid pulls the pawl out of the sun gear plate, allowing the gear to turn again. And then you're right back in direct drive. And remember this. When the control handle is pushed in, the overdrive unit will operate as either direct drive or as overdrive, depending, of course, on whether the pawl is holding the sun gear or letting it turn. Now, hold it right there, will you, Russ? Just what makes the solenoid operate? We'll get to that when we talk about the electrical system. I want to explain one other mechanical part first, Chris. Sure, Russ. Before that pawl can get into a notch in the sun gear control plate, it has to get past another part called a balk ring. And that balk ring Russ is talking about is mounted on the sun gear control plate. As its name implies, this ring balks or prevents the pawl from entering the notch until the plate stops turning and the notch and pawl are lined up. Now, to get back to Chris's question about what makes the solenoid operate so it can move the pawl. That's where electricity enters the picture. Actually, this solenoid is an electromagnet. When it's energized, a pawl rod and spring are loaded, ready to push the pawl into the sun gear control plate when the accelerator pedal is released. The governor controls the solenoid, doesn't it, Russ? That's right, Joe. It makes sure that the circuit to the solenoid is completed at the right time. This is the governor, right here in the overdrive housing. Now let's look at the relay. It's mounted here on the engine side of the dash panel. And you want to remember that there is a heavy initial pull needed to operate the solenoid. That means we need a heavy current. That's right, Tech. But we don't want to draw this heavy current through the ignition switch. So. This relay allows us to use a small amount of current to close the relay points and complete the solenoid circuit. What's this device here on the engine, Russ? That's the kick-down switch, Joe. This switch allows us to get out of overdrive and into direct drive without waiting for the car to slow down to cutout speed. How do you do that, Russ? By just pressing the accelerator pedal down beyond the wide open throttle position. This causes the throttle linkage to operate the kickdown switch. Now, this kickdown switch does two things. First, it cuts the governor out of the circuit to de-energize the solenoid. Second, it shorts out the engine ignition just long enough for torque to be relieved so that the pawl can be pulled out of the sun gear control plate. You're right on the ball, me boy. What's this other switch here on the lower side of the overdrive housing, Russ? That's the rail lockout switch, Joe. Pushing in the control handle closes the contacts in this switch and brings electricity into the circuit. When you operate in conventional drive, you don't need electricity in the overdrive circuit. So when you pull the control handle out, you open the points in the rail lockout switch, which breaks the circuit. So now we have everything we need to make the unit go into overdrive. Current in the circuit, a complete circuit through the governor, and the solenoid energized so that it can push the pawl into engagement with the sun gear control plate as soon as you lift your foot from the accelerator. Okay, Slicker, 
Now let's see you get it out of overdrive. <laughs> no confidence in me, that's what. All we have to do is break the electrical circuit and relieve the engine torque, and we're out of overdrive, just like that. And that's done in two ways. First, when the car slows down below the overdrive cutout speed, the governor points open. That breaks the circuit and de-energizes the solenoid. And when the engine torque is relieved, the pawl rod return spring pulls the pawl out of the sun gear control plate. Second, we can get out of overdrive at a speed above the cut-in speed by using the kick-down switch, as we just explained. Just a minute, Russ. I've got a question that's been bothering me since we started talking about this unit. Suppose you have the control handle in the overdrive position. What happens when you shift into reverse? <laughs> I've been waiting for that question from you, Chris. When you shift to reverse gear, you automatically shift the overdrive unit to conventional drive position. Here's what takes place, Chris. When the transmission low and reverse gear shift rail moves backward, it presses against the end of the overdrive shift rail, moving it backward. This pushes the sun gear into mesh with the internal teeth of the pinion cage. Then the unit is in conventional drive position. And you may notice that a little more effort is required to shift in or out of reverse when you have overdrive. That's because you have an additional load on the shift rail. Don't worry about it. A good point, Tech. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you how to fill this overdrive with lubricant. And you fill it with the same grid oil you use in the transmission of that car. That's right, Tech. In filling the transmission and the overdrive, remove both filler plugs. Fill the overdrive housing first until oil runs from the filler hole and install the plug. Then fill the transmission. And be sure you check that level on all new cars. Right, Tech. And now, what about checking the overdrive electrical system? Good question. If that overdrive is acting up electrically, you've got one of two conditions. Either the paw will not go into engagement with the sun gear control plate, or it will not come out of engagement. That's hitting it right on the head, Tech. That means that the solenoid either is being energized, or it's not being energized. Yeah, and all you've got to do to correct the condition is to figure out why. Well, it's time for me to hit the road. I suppose you fellas out there think it over, and see if you can figure it out. So... Let's make a date right now for next month, when I'll be back and we'll go over it together. So long. So long, Tex. See you next month.